everyone. Right, we are now on part two, the final part of our little green man. I have a white Arkansas, that's pretty much how we left off the last video. Um, putting a little pre-polish into these little berries. Now I've seen a little space on this chap's forehead and I have simply used the white Arkansas without doing the diamond first like I did on the other berries and you can with the white Arkansas. So I've just added three little berries just with the white Arkansas without using the diamond first and you will find they're actually not bad, they're quite deep. Tiny little diamond burr here where I am adding some little um, twiddly stems for the uh, berries to hang from. I just saw the space and uh, that's what, what you do in this sort of thing, you just fill in the spaces. And because I hadn't uh, done the diamond first, used the diamond first, I just added there a tiny little bit of diamond engraving around the very, very rims of the berries so that it matches the other berries. Here I have a tiny little rubber, uh, rubber burr which is doing a final polish so that the berries become clear in the middle. I'm not wasting too much time uh, polishing out the entire berry sphere. I'm only doing the middle bits. And what this does is leave a little bit of whiteness around the edges. And that's just the effect that I want. I'm quite happy with that. You can polish and polish until there's absolutely no sign of any diamond around the edges if you want. That's that's entirely up to you. Right, you can see they are now appearing quite dark. Now this is an interesting little burr. It's a, a very very tiny wheel and there's a bit of diamond right on the flat top which obviously I don't really need. <laughs> And it has uh, got diamond around the edges of the wheel. Now I'm going to use my horrible little glass, as you know, my scrap glass. And if it can work on this, well then it will work on the beautiful glass. So uh, I haven't used this burr for ages, so I needed to test it. Now watch this. I'm hardly pressing and... Da, da, da. Ping! It goes straight through the glass. <laughs> Why you shouldn't use cheap, horrible glass. That was very, very thin anyway. But don't worry, that was fun. You can put holes through the glass. I've done that before and, and had great fun with it, actually. You can do a, um, a fun glass where you do a hole in the middle of a design that you can't see and um, as the person is drinking it dribbles. I call them dribble glasses obviously. Uh, make them occasionally just for fun. So here I am using that particular burr and because I want the leaves to have quite a dramatic vein down the middle that kind of stands out a bit more than normal and um, it, I'm, I'm sort of being a bit careful because of because of the shape of this fur it doesn't do a big swervy curve in a nice easy flow you can because it's cutting really quite deep into the glass then it it sort of wants to go in a straight line and um, so I'm being quite cautious as to where I put it and how I deal with it and you see that I do keep lifting it up so that I can put it back down in the ridge once I've turned the glass so that it is a nice smooth curve because otherwise it can be, become very jerky with sort of kinks in it. 
But, uh, you know, th these are quite dramatic looking veins. They're not veins, I don't know what you, what would you like to call the, the little middle bit of a, a leaf. It's like the stem growing into it. So as I say, this glass um, is really quite substantially thick. So I can do this with absolutely no no worries about it going through the glass. It would take quite a bit to get through that. The other thing is that as you're trying to make it turn, you've got to be careful because it tends to want to create a slightly thicker area, um, depending on how you're holding it, because it's almost like using a calligraphy pen um, in a way. And so you've just got to be a bit delicate. Turn the glass a lot to get it into the right direction. Now you can you can pretty much see how how deep I've gone. And that is jolly good fun. There's so much you can do with this burr. It's not quite the little darling. There's a, a, a burr called a little darling, which is a very much smaller version of this burr. Um, so it's a miniature wheel. Uh, slightly thicker. Um, and that you would use when carving, well, you can use it whenever you feel like it really, but, you know, for different effects. But I have used the Little Darling when carving away a layer of colour on a colour overlay um, piece. Because you're dealing with a sharp sort of lip. So, for example, you're carving out the background of a leaf and that you, ho you hold this burr virtually straight up and down and you can chop it into the side of the leaf and pull it away and pull away the background. It's, it's really dramatic and, and it's such incredible fun to do. You can do a relief on clear glass. Um, it doesn't have to be a colour that you're carving through. Yeah, but perhaps we will perhaps we'll do that for a bit of fun at some point. I've I've done a fair amount of relief engraving on clear glass where you literally carve away the background leaving um your design in relief. So sticking up right out. It's a lot of work, but it's it makes it look like a a lalik or something like that. So here I have got a rubber disc. Uh, I think that's my black one, which is relatively hard. And I'm just running it over um, the leaves. I will probably do this several times. But initially I'm just picking up uh, here and there some darker bits. Because what this is going to do, it's going to run over the shallowest areas and then it will leave what you have engraved deeply because it can't get to it and that gives you instantly the effect that you want you want the the background areas um, the shallower area to be the background and you want your rubber to polish that out so that it looks like it's behind what is white and the white is deeper. It's very difficult to put this in plain English. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I don't know what I was pointing at there. Um, but you know me, when I, when I point at the glass randomly, um, I'm usually helping myself by looking at my finger tapping on the grass on the, on the glass so that I can see it on the screen because the screen of my video camera is very tiny. 
So I, you know, I can't really see uh, the detail. And I want to make sure that my engraving is in the middle of the um, screen. So that's why I randomly point at the glass. And sometimes I point at something particular for me to tell you about and I usually will have forgotten <laughs> what it was I'm going to tell you about. Oh dear. It is much easier to do this, you know, if I was talking to you while I'm engraving, like I used to do on my, my older videos. But it is just totally inefficient. As you know, you can't hear a jolly thing. And, I, you know, I'm trying to stick my microphone into my mask and it's, it's just really not good at all. So it's much easier to do the voiceover. So here I've got a white Arkansas again, simply because I missed a bit. And I had just seen three little berries which I'd forgotten to pre-polish and then polish. So here I'm doing the actual polish. These little uh, pencil rubbers, they are tiny little pieces of, of rubber which you buy separate, separately and as they run out, um, you unscrew them from the mandrel and just replace them. You can keep pulling them out until, you know, pulling them out bit by bit until you've used it all up. And sometimes where I've, I've really got to the end, that's a rat's tail burr, by the way. Um, I've got to the end and I've got a tiny bit left and the back end of it is actually flat rather than pointy. And so sometimes I'll turn it round so that the flat part is is facing outwards and I use that until that's finished. Uh, yeah, you must use your burrs until they are absolutely done and dusted and then you can throw them away. So with this little um, white, ar oh, no, it's not a white arcanza, this is a little rat's tail, I am adding some much finer veins just very simple, very straightforward, simple um, effects. What what this really does, it almost becomes a, um, a pattern on the glass. It looks like Father Christmas. <laughs> Actually, you could do, you could do a green man. Uh, that is that is a Father Christmas, and give him a much happier face than this fellow. This guy's um, I think he's in lockdown. Well, he is in lockdown. Um, it's the overgrown hair leaf effect. Um, here I am uh, sharpening the top of my rat's tail, getting it down to some fresh diamonds so we can carry on with the veins. So back to Father Christmas. Give him a nice. Smiley, smiley eyes and big smile on his mouth. Maybe some um, big cheeks and all the leaves coming out because he's a green man, Father Christmas. You can make it up. It's all pagan anyway. Christmas is pagan. Um, so make it up. Um, and then maybe put a little Christmas hat on him. Why not? Actually, I'll tell you what. Then, not just leaves, but leaves... Not quite like this, but do holly. Holly coming out of the green man. Oh my gosh, I've got to do that. Definitely got to do that. So if you if you fancy having a go at a, a holly, um, a holly Father Christmas, <laughs> that would be great fun to see. Come on, guys, have a go. So when I'm doing these little lines, I am, I'm not just zooming them out as quick as I can. I'm thinking about them uh, as I do them and making sure that I am placing them rather than just scribbling them on.
so at the end of this video actually I have put in a very very short snippet of my dust extractor which I promised a while ago that I would do and it is such a vo short video it's hardly worth putting it on its own anyway so um, I will make sure you all know that it's in at the end of this particular um, video um, and I will tag it as well so that it's something that you can search for um, I haven't even looked up the name of that company that's printed on the side of it. You will you will see um, that it's got a name on the side of it. But it is a, just a very big, noisy dust extractor. <laughs> um. I'm making this up as I go along. I am putting these little stems coming out of all over the place really uh, if you as I say google it green man and you'll see all sorts as I say I have to google it because I really don't know much about them all I know is they are a pagan symbol for um, spring And I'm happy with anything to do with leaves and plants and lovely natural things. Right, what have we got coming up next? Are we back to the big diamond? Sort of at this point you start um, looking at refi refining little bits and pieces. So here I'm adding a bit of shape, a bit more shape to his nose. You can see I've gone quite deep in the middle of his nose because that's really, I want it to stick out more. We've got the thickness of the glass, so you might as well use it. So that's sticking out nicely. You can see the light is picking up the depth of it. This is probably what you would call a sort of a fiddle stage where you you start refining, fiddling about. It's a good thing to do, to look, look carefully at every little bit of the engraving because, you know, my favourite or my least favourite is chippy, little chippy edges. So if you see anything like that, get rid of it. Nice little bit of white, white Arkansas or something like that around the edges. I think I'll probably do that at the end of this video. I'm so impressed with, as I said in the previous video, I'm really impressed with the quality of this, this crystal. It's not an expensive crystal at all and it just glows it's really really nice to work on this chap's got a little bit of a pout by the looks of things <laughs> you can make the lips however you like you can make them dark he can make them light, really. He, he's, you know, he can make his lips out of bark um, or real old leafy lips. Absolutely whatever you fancy. Back with the big rubber and um, adding a bit more depth. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to take it over the whole thing and just scrub away. Just dot it in specific places. 
Again, this is a burr that you don't want to press too hard for too long in the same spot because you will burn the glass. Um, similar thing will happen uh, with a white arkansas, and I've mentioned this before. It's um, you get almost a crackly effect on the glass if you overdo it. After all, these these burrs are speeding along, and you hold that down for you know, and press it into the glass for too long. It it really gets very very hot on the glass. When that does happen, and you you notice a sort of a crackly effect, it will pick up the light. You'll notice straight away that it doesn't look good. Um, and therefore, sometimes you can just polish it, but usually you've got to get a little diamond or something or a little stone just to grind over it, um, and then you can polish it again. My soft grey rubber, or whatever rubber you fancy, just to put a little bit of shadow down the side of his nose. Like a, um, a bit of contour down the sides of your, your nose to make it look a little bit thinner. But it's a natural shadow. No, I don't do that that very often. <laughs> Just in case you're thinking, do I try and make my nose thinner? Um, no, not necessarily. But I do, for ladies out there who use contour, yes, I, occasionally I'll use a contour. Uh, why not? This is um, the sort of back of the glass. I usually do the back or the, the side, my signature and the date. A nice, soft, um, clean tea towel does a great job. Now you can see with the light, if I tip it slightly, you can see, you should be able to see the depth of it. No, I didn't really get it there. Um, that's better. Nice dark background, good lighting. That's how you would photograph it as well dark background and light coming from the top. That would be most effective. And that's, that's looking really cute. I like it. I've seen another space. Yep. Just a freehand twiddly bit. Like a bit of... Uh, Vine, just like you would put on a grapevine, and it I mean, it's nothing, it takes seconds just with the tiny diamond, but it fills in the space. Now, I'm going to add some more little berries using this diamond. I think this is a quite a, a fine quality, it's not a very rough one. I've dipped my finger in the water and just dabbed the water onto the glass so you don't always need to have your drip feed system going. You can just dab it. White Arkansas. Actually, yeah, you ladies, uh, I say ladies because it was one of the ladies who said uh, white Arkansas. But you see, that's just me not having a clue. I just say it as it's spelt. <laughs> but it's probably Arkansas. Um, spelt Arkansas. So, I don't know how, 
how you're meant to say it, but it's a little white, very soft stone. Here I am now going over any little edges where I sort of think, hmm, that's not as neat as I want it to be. And this a tiny little touch of this white Arkansas will just obliterate any roughness. And it's a half tone, which is not a bad thing to have on the edge, so you don't have that really hard uh, edge to it. Well, unless you want it. You can have a hard edge if you want. But it does give a little bit of depth. A little sort of 3D softer edge. I think we must be just about done, quite frankly. No, we're not. We're back to rubber. What am I going to pick up now? I'm really not sure. I have seen some more. The ridge of the nose. That's right, I had um, redone the little bit of highlights in the eyes or the whites of the eyes and you're quite safe to tap this black rubber over the top of that because it's not really going to go into where you've put the whites of the eyes. Although, having said that, I haven't gone deep or anything. That would look silly. But it's just tapping it will get the top edge and not go into the white. And you want to put a little bit of shade just underneath the eyelids, the top eyelids. Yeah, I think we've just about done. So, in fact, we're not just about done. Out with another tiny little white Arkansas. So it's not quite the same shape as the previous one. That was more rounded. This is slightly smaller end. And just adding some effects. I've decided that I want to shape his top lip a little bit, maybe, and make it darker. I don't think I'm really doing a good job of that, quite frankly, <laughs> because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter on this particular piece. Then I decided to try and give it some texture. But I don't think I like that very much. So I went over it again. <laughs> You can. I'm leaving this in. I'm not editing it out so that you can see how I fiddle and faff about and um, and it's perfectly all right to do that, especially on something like this. Right out with the rubber and then just you want to shade your your upper lip. Um, the bottom lip it's going to be a bit more shiny because it's it's sticking out and. Um, catching the light and then shade underneath the bottom lip and especially if a chap like this he's got a uh, a leaf moustache as you do now this little burr, as you can see, I am flitting around these uh, leaves and just in a single stroke where I've used the rat's tail to make the fine veins, I am, I am going along the edge, one side or the other, whichever, of those tiny veins and it instantly will create a dark shadow. 
not a dark shadow, but a little shadow underneath that vein. I have to say, I'm looking at that and I'm seeing um, quite, quite wider shadows than I probably really intended. You can flatten the top of this burr just the same as you do the rat's tail and that will give it a sharper edge, which means that if you did the same action again, you're going to get a sharper shadow. Well, a sharper half tone on your line. It, it really cuts into the glass pretty well, the white Arkansas. Rat's tail again. diamond wouldn't it be nice if we could do ourselves a quick little nose job Not that I want one, but I do. Um, I do feel for people that that s <laughs> struggle along with uh, that sort of thing. I think if you if you if you're not happy with something and you can do something about it, why not? That's all right as long as you don't take it to the extent that some people end up doing and then it's not very pretty. Right, let's surely, surely you finished. Nope. So this little burr is uh, the same width as the tiny wheel that we used Yes, we could have used it instead of the wheel, but the wheel cuts deeply very easily. Whereas this, you, you would have had to press harder and... It's just one of those things. Right. Next up, your tiny little look at my dust extractor. This fellow is now finished. I'm just giving you a very, very quick video of my dust extractor in action. Oops. As promised, you can see I've just put a bit of tissue here and you can see what happens. That is, that is really strong. Whoa. Oh, shut <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, well, what it means is, I believe it just turned it off. You can. Oh. It does that a lot. I, was, <laughs> I didn't hang on to it enough. And uh, all I do is I unscrew the thing right underneath the um, motor there, right at the bottom inside there, and I will retrieve my piece of tissue <laughs> that it's gobbled up. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was jolly good fun, I thought. Happy engraving. See you soon. Bye-bye.